lawyer can do anything from handling your divorce to defending a murder suspect to corporate mergers. Actuaries actually do quite a few things. So I can understand why people get a little bit confused about what we actually do when you try to read that all-encompassing definition of assessing the financial uncertainty associated with risk. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to try to tell you in this new multi-part series about what actuaries actually do. And this is part one, pricing car insurance. In its most basic form, pricing is just determining how much to charge for a product. Now, if I were trying to figure out how much to charge you for something like, say, this vase full of finger puppets, which is a thing that genuinely sits in my living room because we are normal, totally super normal people, I would say that it costs me a dollar to make them, I sell them to you for two dollars, I make a dollar profit, done, easy, simple, priced. In the case of selling finger puppets or selling coffee or selling any tangible thing, you know the costs up front. You know how much it's going to cost you to make the product before you sell it. Now, is there a risk in that? Yeah, sure, there's the risk that maybe someone won't buy it, but ultimately you know how much it's gonna cost you, and so you just add a little profit on top, and that's how much you charge. When I sell you car insurance today, I don't know if you're gonna have no accidents and cost me nothing. You might have three accidents that each cost $500. You might have one accident that costs a million dollars because you hit and kill somebody. Hopefully the majority of people are never gonna have to use their car insurance, but the risk comes from those people who do use it. We don't know if you're gonna have an accident, when you're gonna have an accident, and how much that accident is gonna cost. That's what actuaries try to figure out. How do we find out how much you are gonna cost to our company? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now that our goal is not to figure out how much you are gonna cost our company because I can't do that. I can't know the unknowable. All that we can do is look at past experience and try to use it to explain the future. Look at the past, predict the future, predictive modeling, oh my gosh, it makes so much sense. No, it doesn't. When you call the insurance company or you go online and you start typing in things like your age and your gender and where you live and what type of car you have, that information is going behind the scenes into a model that is developed by the actuaries and your basic pricing model is probably gonna look something like this. You start with a base rate of $100 and if you're a man, you multiply it by 0.2 and if you're 25 years old, you multiply it by 0.2. Seven, and if your favorite cheese is Swiss cheese, then you multiply it by three, and then you do all the multiplication of all these different factors, and you come up with a price at the end. Simple, easy, done. It's the actuary's job to come up with these factors, the times two, times three, times 0.5, times 0.7. We wanna differentiate people based off of what we expect them to cost us. Now, I can't tell you what you're gonna cost us, but I can tell you what a person like you is expected to cost us on average. But why is this important? Why can't we just charge everyone $200 and forget about it? Well, first of all, just as a base instinct, if everyone was charged $200, you'd feel like that wasn't fair. Why am I being charged the same amount as someone who has a much more expensive car and so if they wreck their car, they're gonna get charged more? Fairness is something that we do have to consider. We wanna consider what do we think is predictive, what are different factors that are gonna make your insurance more expensive, your claim more expensive. Let's say there was an insurance company that charged everyone $200 flat. Then let's say there's another insurance company that comes on the scene and decides, you know what I figured out? People who like Swiss cheese are actually costing us $250 and people who don't like Swiss cheese are costing us $150. Well, what's gonna happen? All the people that don't like Swiss cheese are gonna switch to the company that's charging $150 and all the people that do like Swiss cheese are gonna switch to the company that's charging $200. Well, the company that's charging $150 and says these people actually cost us $150, they're fine. But the people who are charging $200 to everyone, even though those people actually cost $250, well, they're in trouble now because they're undercharging. This year is called adverse selection. We want to categorize people in such a way that we're charging them the price that we expect that they're going to cost us so that we can make a fair profit, you're not being overcharged, everyone's being fair, then once you have all these factors figure out, this is your actuarial cost, then you have a whole set of business conditions on top of that. If you wanna charge $100 but everyone else is charging 90, no one's gonna buy your product. So you need to make a business decision. Can we lower it to $90 and lose a little bit of profit in order to gain market share? You might also decide you really wanna target students because you think that if you target them as students, they'll stick with you in the long run. So you might give discounts to students, you might give discounts to seniors, you might, I don't know what you're gonna do. These insurance companies do crazy wild things. That's what would they say about insurance companies. They are crazy and wild. In Canada, we have two sets of regulators that we have to deal with when deciding how much to charge for insurance. You have your first set of regulators that are trying to figure out 
are you charging a fair price? They're gonna make sure that you're not overcharging people, you're not discriminating. You wouldn't be able to use someone's race as a factor, for example. Then you have your second set of regulators which make sure that you're not charging too little because if you're not charging enough money, then you won't have enough money to pay back the claims when they come in. So the pricing actuary has to deal with the don't charge too much, don't charge too little, be fair, don't discriminate, but figure out who you're trying to target and figure out what the market conditions are and figure out how much you can increase prices without causing people to leave. Mash that up, put it all together, shove it into a system, and then that's how you price insurance. Now you might be thinking, well, I came up with insurance prices, why do I have to change the insurance prices? I've already come up with these insurance prices, so why would anyone this be a long-term job? You could just do it once and then, you know, go nap a little bit and uh, just draw a salary? Is that how that happens? I wish. But conditions change all the time. There are trends in costs related to medical expenses, related to accidents, how much things cost to get repaired, uh, frequency of accidents. If a new technology gets introduced and makes cars less likely to get into accidents, that's going to affect your expected costs. The market is ever evolving. The frequency of accidents is ever evolving. Essentially, you're pricing over and over and over to make sure that you're charging people as fair a price as possible based off of your most recent data that you got. If I had to translate this to a day-to-day, -day, I would say this would involve a lot of playing with databases, sitting around on your computer, tap, 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 tapping, um, trying to find new ways of looking at the data, trying to look at retention rates, meaning will people stay with you at this price point, building predictive models like GLMs, and also R&D type cool things like trying to find a new factor to make your pricing more accurate or trying to find a way to be even more fair, to beat your competition, to be able to charge the best possible price for the people. If anything I said in this video confused you, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to address it. Maybe in another video, maybe I'll just answer you. I answer most people most of the time, some of the time occasionally, if you're being friendly. If you're not being friendly, I'm not gonna be so friendly with you. Sorry, I'm not gonna answer because I don't need the hate in my life. If you want a part two to this video, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to see more of my face. I put out new videos every once in a while whenever I really feel like it. I don't really have a schedule right now because I and thank you for calling. Bye.